What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I've got a video that I have been working on for a very long time. This video is all about AR-15 malfunctions, how to diagnose, and how to treat. Let's get into it. So just a reminder guys, if you're watching this video and you're not a subscriber, take a minute, join our community, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you're alerted every time that we upload new content. So if you're watching this video, your AR is not working. Or maybe it's working and you just want to learn something. I hope that's the case. I hope everything's going great. So what we're going to cover on this video are recurring issues with the AR-15 or the AR platform and show you how to diagnose the underlying problem. So with all rifles, regardless of what you're shooting, there are going to be what are called stoppages. These are rare. They are occasional issues that just kind of pop up. It's not a continuous problem that you're always having that is repeatable continually over and over. In the event that you have what's called a stoppage, my advice to you is to simply clear and reset the firearm as normal. So however you would clear that issue, clear the proper way and continue about your day. So the majority of AR malfunctions are caused by the gas system. I would go on a limb and say it's probably 90 to 95% of the issues that you have are because of something going on with your gas system. If it's not a gas system issue, chances are it's gonna fall into that other 5%. Parts or maintenance. Maintenance being cleaning, parts being components, magazines, ammunition, etc. Depending on the rifle that you have, whether it's brand new, whether it's something that you built, or where it's something that has been around for a long time and we're just going to call it seasoned, it's got a lot of rounds in it, will determine kind of what is the course of action. Typically when you see seasoned rifles with higher round counts, parts issues tend to be one of the number one reasons. It's not necessarily gas, it's mostly parts. When you're dealing with home builds, gas issues are, I would say, probably 99% of the problem. That extra 1% is probably the part being put in correctly or being out of spec. So with that being said, if you're having a problem, it's either your gas system or your parts. So we're going to talk about all of those issues, but we're going to focus on the gas system. For your gas system, you're going to fall into one of two categories. You're either going to be undergassed or overgassed. So really that simple, one or the other. So we're going to take it down to the bench here in a minute, and I'm going to show you what you can do to see whether you are one of those two things. Our categories for AR malfunctions are going to be in four topics. So we're going to do this by segment. The first one is going to be failure to fire, then failure to extract, then failure to eject, and then finally failure to feed. All four of those main issues come down to gas, parts, or maintenance. It's really that simple. So let's head down to the bench. And let's get into it. You're going to hear me refer to probably seven or eight times in this video, the one round mag test. And all that is, you have to do this on the range. You can't do this. You actually physically have to have a place where you can shoot the rifle to perform the one round mag test. All you do, one round, one magazine, put it in there, put it in your rifle, charge it as normal, and pull the trigger. After you do that, your bolt should cycle fully and lock back. If your bolt does not lock back, you have failed the one round mag test. So if you shoot and your bolt is still in the closed position, what that means is there is not enough gas through the rifle to fully move your bolt back far enough to catch that bolt catch. Whenever you hear about the one round mag test, that's what we're talking about. If you fail that test, you're under gassed. Let's talk about reasons why your rifle may be under gassed. So the first thing that you wanna check, number one, is your buffer spring. 
or your buffer coil. I have two here. The shorter one is carbine length. The longer one is rifle length. If you do not have the correct buffer spring on your gas system, your gun will not cycle. How do you know the difference between a rifle and a carbine? Past the physical length. Don't always go by the length because it could be worn out. What you need to do is count coils. Rifle has 43 coils in the buffer spring, whereas a carbine has 37. That's your first check. If you're running carbine length, count your 37. You have 37 coils here. If you do, you're right. Don't ever, 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 please don't ever do this. Don't cut a rifle down to make it 37. Don't cut a carbine down shorter to make it shorter. You're not solving the issue. The next thing that you need to check, do you have the proper gas tube for your system length? So if you're running a rifle length, do you have a rifle length gas tube? If you're running a carbine length, do you have a carbine length gas tube? The easiest way to see if you have the correct length is to look inside of your receiver and you should see that gas tube coming out. That gas tube should be two thirds of the way past this little indentation that is in your receiver. This is where your cam pin rotates. It shouldn't be short, it shouldn't be long. If it's long, your bolt won't even close fully. So check that second. The third thing to check, and this is probably the easiest, what kind of buffer are you running? Typically when you buy a stock kit, it will come with a standard weight buffer, three ounces. They make heavy buffers, 3.5, 3.8, 4.3, 4.7, 5.2. If you are undergassed, it could mean that you were using a heavy buffer. So a simple and easy fix may be just to go to a lighter buffer. These are adjustable. So you can drive, drive a little pin in there, knock it out, change the weights, play around with it. If you haven't seen my video on it, check it right here on buffers. After all that, you still haven't found the problem. Next thing you want to check is your bolt carrier group, in particular, your gas key, which is this little part of your bolt carrier group right here. Is it loose? Is it staked? All your gas keys should be staked, because if these Allen screws start to back out, this is going to be loose, which means gas is going to leak out from the sides, and you're going to lose that gas. It's not going to be redirected to moving the bolt and it's gonna kind of be wasted coming out of the side. So check your gas key. The next thing that you can do, inside of your bolt here, you have gas rings. Are these little three rings that are around your bolt head right here? And what they do, it will actually seal off that bolt Bad gas rings is another place where you could be losing your gas. So if you wanted to ever check and see if your gas rings are good or bad, get your bolt fully assembled. You haven't done anything to it. Firing pin's still in there, all that. And you're going to pull out the, the bolt and simply stand it up on its end. If the bolt carrier group can stand up like so without falling in on itself, like that, you know your gas rings are fine. I've gotten bolts at gun shows that would fail this test almost immediately. So if you ever go to buy a bolt at a gun show, do the test real quick. If you put it on there, and as soon as you stand it up onto that bolt, if it falls back down, you got bad gas rings. Finally, as an absolute last resort, because the last thing I'm gonna do is take your whole gun apart, uh, but at this, in this case, what you'd have to do, take your handguard off, take your gas key off, is check and make sure that your gas block is aligned properly on your barrel. And this is an easy, easy way to tell. If your gas block is on there correctly, it actually leaves a little mark right above your gas port. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to pick this up. I think you can. I can kind of see it on screen here. But you'll see... Right here, there's a little, see that little almost circle? It's almost invisible. 
That is the actual inside of the gas block. And it's showing that it's fully seated over top of that gas port here on your barrel. A pass would show you that little tattoo mark is going to be perfectly central to the gas port. A fail would be any part of that tattoo mark covering the gas port. So those are all the ways to check for undergassing. If you fail that one round mag test, you are undergassed. The majority of your problems are most likely going to be fixed with either a lighter buffer or changing out. Maybe you have a high powered buffer spring in there. Let's say as we go, as we're going through this, you find that your rifle is overgassed. So what are the things to look for to diagnose an overgassed rifle? What are some of the symptoms? Number one, look at your casings. Okay, this is an easy telltale sign uh, of overgassing. Is look at the head stamp of the casing. It'll have the caliber, the make, all that stuff on there. Right? If the, you see smudges or smearing, kind of like the bolt is when it's coming back to feed that round into the barrel, if it's smashing into that, it's going to mar the back of the rim here. And you will clearly see distress marks on the back of your casings. A total, like a rip in the back of your casing here. It's only going to be on one side. It's where the extractor literally ripped a chunk out of the case right on the rim, and it left the case still inside the barrel. Other thing to look for, the ejection pattern of your round. An overgassed rifle will typically eject these rounds in front of you. So they'll kind of be at this position here, the one o'clock position. The reason it's doing that is that round is coming back so hard, it's hitting the brass deflector, and instead of just kind of moving off nicely, it's slamming back into that one o'clock position. Overgassed is gonna end up in the front of you. Perfectly gassed is gonna end up right about your two o'clock to three o'clock position in there and undergassed is gonna most likely end up at the three o'clock to the five o'clock positions. Next thing to look at, it's possible if you're overgassed, your buffer weight may be too light. Move to a heavier buffer to slow down that action. It's going back way too fast. And the reason that you're seeing these cases ripping is because when they're in the chamber of the barrel, they actually expand to fill out the throat of the barrel. So before that case has the chance to contract back, it's still expanding. The extractor is ripping it out and it's not going to go anywhere because it's still fully expanded. So what you need to do is slow down the whole time here. Another fix for overgassing is move to an adjustable gas block. Then finally, Check your buffer springs for wear. If they're worn out, it means that they're not providing the resistance needed for your buffer and your bolt to cycle through the gun. Your buffer spring for a carbine should be no less than 10 and 16 inches. If you're running a rifle length system, as soon as you drop to that 11, you want to replace it. So if you're overgas those are the symptoms you want to check so now let's go into the four main malfunctions that ars are notorious for having the first we're going to talk about is failure to fire failure to fire means you pull the trigger the hammer goes click the bullet doesn't go bang a couple things that you're going to need to look at number one check your ammo take a look at it you should see a nice deep primer strike on the primer of your casing. If you're seeing little pecs, it means that you are indeed having a light primer strike. So what does that mean? Where do we look for the problem? Try a different ammo. Maybe it's an ammo, maybe you got a bad batch. It happens, 
more likely than not, there's something else going on in here. It's not just the ammo. So the first thing that we want to do here is clean and inspect the bolt carrier group. Pull the bolt carrier group out. Drop your bolt down. Give it a shake. Can you hear the firing pin moving inside of the bolt? If you can't, take it out, clean it, inspect your firing pin. Make sure that it's not damaged. Make sure that when the bolt is in the retracted position, you can push that firing pin up and it is gonna be protruding through the back of the bolt. If you're not hearing this sound, take your bolt apart. Bolts over time will crack and will wear. Typically, in a bolt, your two biggest, well, your three biggest failure points are right here and right here, right around the extractor. Every bolt that I've seen that has physically failed is because one or both of these lugs have literally cracked off. The other thing you wanna check is right here where the cam pin goes in. Look along this wall right here. Ensure that there's no cracks in there, that it's not cracked. Little hairline fractures can actually kind of bend the bolt. So if you're thinking of the when the firing pin is in there, excuse me, when the firing pin is in there like this, if this bolt is bent at all, that firing pin is going to be really hard and restricted. So if that's the case, chances are you have a bent bolt. The other thing to do, make sure you fully clean it out. If there's any oil or carbon or junk in here, your firing pin should be dry. I do not like to lubricate the firing pin. It should just kind of float in this system and move freely and easily. If everything is looking good with your bolt, the next thing you want to look at is the hammer. One of the biggest mistakes that I see with builders who build their own is that they put the wrong disconnector spring into the trigger. Your hammer's disconnector spring, typically a lot of manufacturers will make them a different color so you can tell the difference between the two, but it has a flare at the bottom. This is easily mistaken for the spring that goes into your bolt catch. If you pull that disconnector out and your spring just falls out or it's easy to take out, chances are you either put it in backwards or you have the wrong spring in there. The next thing that you're gonna wanna check is your hammer spring. Do you have your hammer spring installed correctly? Like so, and this should be holding onto the back of the hammer so when the hammer goes forward, it is coming this way under a tremendous amount of tension. So let's say you have it backwards. That hammer has no pressure at all. I mean, this is not hard at all for me to set that. So that means that your hammer is basically underpowered or the, you're using the maybe a quarter of the power of the spring of the hammer as opposed to this way where it's generating a ton of energy. Make sure that the arms of your hammer are on top of your trigger pin. If they're below, it's not going to generate enough leverage and force to fly that hammer forward. So they should be laying on top of your hammer pin. There are these little notches on those pins. This is where your hammer pin sits, right inside these notches. Go through those, and I promise you're going to get your failure to fire fixed. So next we go to failure to extract. Very simply put, the round stays in the chamber. You will physically see that casing sitting in the chamber like that. You may be able to rock it out, you may be able to get it out on your own, or you may need to get a ramrod and ram the casing out. You do not want to slam your bolt home and try to pull it out. You could lodge it in there further. You could shear off one of your arms of your bolt. Ensure the magazine is out, the gun is clear, go to a safe place, and manually eject 
the round using a rod or a cleaning bore. Once you have the round out, this is when we're gonna take a look at it and we're gonna look for signs of wear. If we see that smeared head, if we see the extractor ripped out the side of the rim here, all that means is your gun is overgassed. Now go back to the things we talk about to check for overgassing and then go ahead and follow those steps. If the round looks fine, what you need to do, pull out your bolt and take a look at your extractor. Should be nice and tight. When you go to move it, it should not move easily. So if the extractor is loose, chances are we're gonna need to change some components of your extractor. In order to replace your extractor, you're gonna get a pin. You're gonna push out this pin here. This pin should come out fairly easy. You should be able to push this out by hand. Now when we look at the extractor, check our lip, make sure it's not broken or cracked. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to check is there's a little spring, an O-ring right here. Check this spring, make sure the spring isn't broken. Make sure the O-ring is still looking good, especially on an older unit. These things can dry rot and rot out. Chances are you're probably going to need to replace this spring and the O-ring. Easy, easy, cheap fix, $5. You can go get a BCM O-ring kit and you should be back in business. So if you've checked this, you've checked the casing, you've checked the, the O-ring, everything looks good here on the extractor, the extractor looks good. Consider getting an adjustable gas block to regulate the gas. Remember, you're dealing with an overgassed system now, so get an adjustable gas block. You can go to heavy buffer, et cetera, et cetera, to help you mitigate that overgassing. So next we're gonna get into probably the worst, the failure to eject. This is where you're gonna have double feeds, things like that, like stove pipes. I mean, there's all kinds of messes that you have when you're going into a failure to extract. So what you wanna do first, as with all of these, is make sure that you are properly clearing the rifle. So the easiest way to check for this, again, clear the rifle, put in one round, unfired. You're gonna place that round into the gun. You're gonna charge the gun. Let that round go in. And then when you eject it, does the round come out or not? If the round does not come out, you have an ejector issue. If when you go to eject the round, the round ejects as normal, your ejector is fine. So at that point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get that round and go ahead and do the one round mag test to see if the bolt locks back after you fire. If you fail this, your gun is under gassed. If you pass it, chances are you have a problem with the extractor. So your extractor is located on the face of your bolt. It's this little guy right here. This little spring and plunger is under a tremendous amount of pressure. Make sure that that moves. It should not move easily. You should not be able to move this with your hand. Take the ejector out. Remember, this is under a lot of pressure. So when you're punching out this little roll pin right here, make sure to have this upside down or your finger in front of it, or you're gonna lose the whole thing. Go ahead, inspect the spring, inspect the plunger, make sure that everything is moving. Give it a little bit of grease if you need to. Go ahead and retry. And that should solve your failure to eject issue. So finally, we get to what I think is probably the most common issue, the failure to feed. Now what this means is when you're putting the rounds into the magazine, you're charging it, the rounds are not going into the rifle, they're not sitting into the chamber, they're double feeding, 
they're um, getting damages. You'll see a lot of these issues. Your, your cartridge will have a dent right here. Two big issues that you can have with this. One, it could be the magazine. So my suggestion is to always have multiple van brand brands of magazines. If you're finding you're having the issue with Magpul, go to another style. If after doing all of that, you're having the same issue across all of the magazines, go ahead and do what's called a mag drop test. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. That's not a mag drop test. Go ahead, place the magazine into your rifle and then press the magazine release. Make sure that that magazine comes out with no assistance. What that's gonna ensure is that it's unobstructed in the magazine well and that it's seated properly with the mag cap. If you like to load your mags with 30 and you have the bolt closed, it's a very, possi very good possibility that when you seat this mag, it's not seated into the rifle. It's just in there and you could just pull it out. The problem is, is you're smashing that round into the bottom of the bolt and that pressure is not allowing you to fully seat the magazine, which is why you gotta get a nice smack at the bottom to ensure that magazine is fully seated. So if you fail the mag drop test, you press it, unloaded, empty magazine, and it doesn't fall out. Really tight getting out or putting in. You could potentially have a lower issue. Check your mag catch. Make sure that when you press that, it's fully out of the way. If you need to adjust it, just go ahead, press this magazine button all the way in, and you can go ahead and adjust how far your mag catch lever comes into your receiver. Everything looks good on that end. Check under here. Super weird. Depending on the kind of lower you have, you may have replaced your trigger guard. Some of these are integral, like we have on here. This is all one piece. Some of them you can change. Not all of these are to spec. So you may find, if you pour up your finger right here, there's a little bit of a lip. The back of your mag may be running and rubbing right in there. So give that a little look. Make sure that you've got clearance in here. If you find that it's rubbing, it's a real easy fix. Just pop this guy out, file it down a little bit, put him back in, and I promise you, these guys will seat perfectly. After you've checked all that, everything looks good. There's one more thing that you need to check. And if you did a home build, you really want to make sure that you get this right. Your AR has what are called M4 feed ramps. Now these are basically little cutouts, just like here, if we look at this barrel, you can see these little cutouts, the barrel. And what that does is, depending on whether your round is on the right or the left side of the magazine, will help assist that round from feeding into the chamber. Your barrel either can have these or cannot have these. It can go either way. Your upper receiver also has right here, there are the feed ramps right there. Your receiver could have these and could not have these. So when this barrel is into the receiver, you can see how those cutouts from the barrel go right into the receiver. They both work together. That's on the receiver. And then when we put the barrel in, they all match up. This is the feeding problem that you could be experiencing. I wanna put up a little chart here to show you guys. If your barrel has the feed ramps and your receiver does not, you should be okay because it's moving from a flat receiver and it's gonna hit those feed ramps 
into the barrel and you should be okay. If your barrel does not have feed ramps, and your receiver does not have feed ramps, you could be hitting on the bottom or crown of the barrel. So let's imagine that this was, it could be hitting there and denting it. You'll know, because you'll have the front tip of your, of your round will be damaged, and right here, right on that shoulder, will be damaged as well. If your barrel does not have them, but your receiver does, you may also be doing the same thing because it could be taking the feed ramp of the receiver and then smacking into the side of the barrel. This also causes a failure to feed. And then obviously the best case scenario is they both have feed ramps and in that case, this should not be an issue. But check your round to see if there are scratches You'll see deep scratches here. You'll see gouges on the shoulder. You may see the tip is, is uh, pressed in. All those are telltale signs that your M4 ramps are not lining up or one thing has them and one does not. And it's not allowing that bullet to move smoothly into the chamber. All right, so I hope this helped you guys out. I, this has been literally hundreds of video, hundreds of hours of watching videos, range time to get all this together to try to make it one comprehensive guide for you guys to work through. If you like some of the charts and graphs that I have in here, let me know. I'll be more than happy to send them to you. They're on my shared drive. I can just as easily send them to you and you can use them as kind of workflows or work throughs if you're having an issue at home. But I would say if I was to wrap the entire video up with one thing. The one round mag test is the absolute best thing that you can do if you're having issue. As soon as you have an issue, drop everything. Do the one round mag test. That is gonna right off the bat tell you if you're under gassed. And if it passes the one round mag test, then you can move forward into the other parts of it the pot potential of being overgassed, the parts, the maintenance, etc. Know that one round mag test, it will save you. It's gonna save you a lot of ammo, a lot of frustration, and just work through the problem. So I hope it helped you out, guys. As always, leave comments down in the description. You can always shoot me an email right here. I'll be more than happy to walk through. Uh, if there's anything that I missed, leave it down below. I'm doing another one for the AK system as well. So hopefully this helped you. And until next time, make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.